This is the Griffin Realty Group Ask a Griffin podcast, episode number six. Are you a buyer, seller, or real estate agent who has questions about buying or selling residential property, but you just can't seem to find an easy way to get your answers? Well, you're definitely in the right place. I'm Danny Griffin, the founder of the Griffin Realty Group and the host of the Ask a Griffin podcast. But to help you take immediate action to get started in the right direction, if you need to buy or sell a property right now or in the near future, you can take advantage of our step-by-step guides that are waiting for you at Griffin courses.com griffin courses.com all right let's get started with this section here where we roll into this seller series that we've been involved in and we talk about the subject of condition and the first question that we always get is how do i compare not just the condition of my property but my property in total to other homes Okay, that's the question we get all the time. How do you do that? And, and and people get defensive. So the first point is here, all right, let's just agree that no two properties are perfectly alike. See, I think when we go to sell a property, there's some sort of a strange defense mechanism that swells up and we, we get defensive about our home and we want to protect it like it's a child. And And so when somebody suggests that another property might be like ours, there's a natural trigger reaction to the negative side of looking at that. Well, there's nothing like my property. I hear that constantly. And in fact, I probably do it myself when I go to sell one of my properties. We begin to look at the redeeming features and benefits of having lived in this property and and we start to go blind towards evidence. It's a key point here that I want to talk about, okay? So the next point here is you must consider, you must consider When you're going to sell, you must consider the condition of other properties because they're an alternative for the buyers. So if you were out looking, or maybe you can remember, and if you can't, here's how this business works. When a buyer goes out to look at properties, there's a highly like a high likelihood that they have looked and vetted multiple properties and that they're going to physically see them in one fell swoop. Meaning they're going to run around with their real estate agent and they're going to see two, three, five, ten, a lot more. Who knows? They're going to look at properties and they're going to be making comparative decisions. It has nothing to do with your process. It has everything to do with theirs. So they have this bundle of money that they have committed in their minds to buying a property or a loan that they're getting to buy a property. And there's a limit. And so they're shopping. And they are looking at the condition, the features, and the benefits of what that money can buy to be inside that geography, and they're looking for the best deal. You would do the same. So as a seller, it's important to get in the shoes of the buyer, which is very difficult because you're going, typically, especially if it's a primary residence or it's even a secondary home where you've grown up and it really means a lot to you, we get emotional. So we never really take that beat as a seller to get in the shoes of the buyer and say, what would it be like to be a buyer looking at my property along with others? So this whole concept, if you've ever heard the the quip, oh, we'll get the CMA. Brokers and agents are too quick to use our lingo and not explain it thoroughly, but that simply stands for comparable market analysis. I'm going to look at the comparables. And like I said, a lot of people say, well, there's nothing like mine. Uh, I built it myself or I did this special. I get it. And that is all very relevant and true. However, from a comparable standpoint, it's not so much the product to the product. It's what the money actually is buying. And that's the next key point here is that I believe in my experience, it's far smarter to compare your properties that have actually sold than to the ones that are active and maybe pending, okay? Again, I'm not stating something rocket science or something amazingly insightful there, but I'm saying you should focus on the solds because when you look at the solds as comparisons of what the money bought, that's the whole setup. So you have this concept of what your property's worth and don't say, oh, I have no idea. You do or you hope And there's a number or a range in your head that you have to deal with. So when a real estate agent brings you these past solds, you're looking to just get close enough to start. We're not trying to get down the details and you immediately look at the sheet and you get defensive. Well, this doesn't have the the architectural grade shingles and they only have one. I get it. I get it. Slow down and say, 
I was hoping my property was worth X. Let's see what X just bought. Oh, that's interesting. Again, I know I'm trying to get inside your head to calm you down so that you look at the evidence realistically. And maybe some of that evidence will excite you when you really do see the fact that your house is a little bit bigger. It's on a flatter lot. It has a better view. It has a, you know, a different type of layout with an extra bedroom, an extra bathroom. All those things are real true value adds. You're right. You would be right to consider those. And clearly the condition, uh, these other properties look like they have deferred maintenance. It even says it in the, the MLS or the multiple listing description. This house needs a little bit of love, but could be this and yours doesn't. You've done all the upgrades. You've done all the updates. Wonderful. That's the comparative process as a seller that you're going through yourself. And and you need to look at those things that sold. So again, you're starting off with, I believe that my house is worth this or in this price range. I always say to people when I'm coming over to the house, what do you think it's worth? Well, that's why I'm having you over. No, 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 no. What do you think it's worth? I've never been there before. What are you hoping it's worth? Because I'd like to bring the evidence, the sold comparisons or what the money bought. I'd like to bring the evidence that hopefully supports your number. You see what I'm saying? This isn't a contentious moment in time where we're looking at the condition of your house and, and, and trying to beat it up. We're simply saying, hmm, okay, from an observer standpoint, let me just guide you through. That's what we do. We come in, we look at these properties. Now that I've had the, the nickel tour, I like to call it, or the quick tour of your property, I look at it inside and outside and I look at its features and benefits. I look at whether or not there is deferred maintenance and, and, and I begin to look at what the money bought. Is your house a better deal than what the money just bought? And again, this varies as a real estate agent coach across the country. I get a chance to look into all of these different marketplaces. So certainly comparables back a couple of months might be relevant in a hot market, but I might have to go back further. If I'm saying luxury on Cape Cod, for example, I might have to go back over a whole course of a year and say, hmm, there weren't many that sold in this price range. Let me go, let me go back further in time. Now, clearly, the further back I go, the less the marketplace is exactly like that today. The closer I can get, the more similar it is, right? You get the point. But it's very important to take a look at the pictures and the details of each of the properties that sold as close to what you're offering. And that might be geographically close by, but for example, if you're luxury waterfronts and there aren't enough, we might have to go from town to town, village to village. Who knows? Let's just see what the money bought. And let's start there. And, and I think that's why solds become such an important barometer of what the market has been doing. It's not an exact indication of what will happen for you because again, we're not selling a commodity. And the higher up the price range you go, the more difficult it is to, com to, to compare. There may be less of these properties to compare to. So we have these challenges where we have to make adjustments together, not contentiously against each other, right? And ultimately, when you're looking at this information, remember it's coming directly out of the marketplace and the marketplace doesn't lie. It tells the truth of what buyers actually paid. So as a seller, you don't have to guess, well, uh, I'm better than the house down the street that just came on it, X. Well, you don't know that that house down the street that just came on the marketplace is the right price at all. That's why I'm saying I would pay super close attention if I were you to solds. That's the truth. That's a done deal. A transaction happened at that number. It's, it's information that you can get your hands on. It can be interpreted for you by a professional and, and you have real reality. You're not guessing. See, there are an enormity of properties that go on the market for the first time. They're overpriced. Somebody didn't go through this process or they truly weren't motivated and the property expires. So you could be comparing yourself to properties that are not going to win either in the marketplace. That's why solds really matter here, okay? So that marketplace information you're looking at is real. Nobody's making it up. Nobody's skewing it. It's not opinionated. It's fact. Closed sales are what they are. And in our marketplace, as a realtor, I'm able to get an enormous amount of detail, put it right under your nose and show it to you. And let you react. And I, I'm trying to coach you to be re ready to react in a way that's reasonable. I get it. The emotional attachment to your property, especially if it's home for you, is going to be high. But try to look at the facts of this and be realistic. Let me summarize. 
Key points. How do you compare your property to others? Well, number one, you start off by agreeing you actually can do that and should do that. It's a fact of life when you go to sell a property. Number two, consider the condition of these other properties and, and what the money bought as an alternative for buyers. This is what buyers actually said yes to. That's a pretty good clue on how to sell your property. And then remember, we're looking at solds primarily. That's a done deal. It's sold. Yes, you can look at actives and pendings as maybe a trend, but there's hazard in there. Stick to the solds to really try to refine your price range. And then ultimately, the market doesn't lie. This is what a buyer said yes to. This is what it bought. So especially if you've already tried and you've expired, well, take a look at what sold while you were on that was in a similar price range. And that will tell you the truth about where you were off, okay? All right, let me summarize this in a key point. While every home is certainly unique in some way, the truth is that as a seller, you still must truly and honestly compare the condition of your property to others that have sold in a similar price range and be honest with yourself about the real differences in market value. All right, remember, you can take immediate action to get started in the right direction if you need to sell or buy a property right now or in the near future by getting our free step-by-step -step guides on how to set a right plan for yourself. And they're located at griffincourses.com, griffincourses.com. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast so that you don't miss out on any in insights each time we upload an episode. We also post all of these episodes all over our social media channels. So remember to turn on those notifications for Griffin Realty Group and you won't miss the reminders. If you want to go look at some of these that are um, in the blog feed, you can find that at thegriffin.co, thegriffin.co. We also would appreciate it if you would share our content with other people just like you so they get the help that they need and you can join our mission in becoming a person for others, helping all these other people buy or sell properly. Hey, thanks for listening. Remember, nobody's coming for you. So go get to work on your own plan on how to properly buy or sell a property. And we look forward to getting your questions and having them featured on this podcast. See you in the next episode.